One two check. check one, one two, two check. One two check. One two. Is working? Hello. Hi everybody. Wow, it's bright up here. Surprisingly, I don't know. Mike. This is my first working. time here. This Sweet. is uh, kind of exciting, to be honest. Yeah. I've been wanting to talk about this for, <laughs> for a long time. Yay! Uh, hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? No NFT, no play. That is the, basically um, the motto. Um, we have cut, I have cut personally, every single game that is not NFT. If it's not NFT, I'm not playing it. Um, so yeah, Dave. Uh, well, let's let's. I'm back, obviously. I'm just here to help uh, mediate the discussion. I'll talk a little bit about it too, but... Um, I'll let you intro. Intro yourself. Talk about your background. I'll go to all three of you, and then we'll we'll kick it off from there and talk about trends in gaming. Perfect, man. It's uh, it's amazing to have you here, man. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm Kagi Jan. Um, I'm a YouTuber. Uh, as of right now, I'm a YouTuber, but I see myself as something else. Entrepreneur. After this, I'll do something else. Who knows? Um, I started YouTube maybe like five, six years ago. Twitch as well didn't work out too well. Then, um, you know, got into the NFT space, gaming space specifically. Um, in 2020, um, in 2020, I found maybe like three games. They were like kind of out there, you know, not really. Um, then got into Axie early 2020 as well. And I compared communities, you know, between um, the, the games that were out there at the moment. And I saw that Axie, the community was so strong. And that's when it hit me. And nobody told me about this. Because now you hear community, community, community. But I actually felt it. And you felt it in the Discord. As you asked a question in Axie, it was, it, they, they would answer right away. They would give you all the alpha. Um, and in other games, they would like hold back. The OGs would hold back and not give you too much info. Uh, but in Axie, they just gave you everything. Like, no, this is how you do it, this, 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 and that. And that caught my attention. And then I went into Axie and just grew my channel with Axie at the beginning. And then um, went into other games because I wanted to... Um, grow the space, not only Axie Infinity. I think Axie Infinity is in good hands. I mean, we, we got Dave here and many other creators like Bryson. Um, there's so many right now that it's crazy to talk about. But now I just cover every single NFT game out there that I think it has potential. I'm very, very outspoken. Uh, if I don't like your game, I say I don't like it. Um, I'm not going to, you know, put something that I don't like in my channel. And yeah, that's pretty much who I am. Um, thank you. Sweet. Hi, my name is Matt Kahn. Uh, I am the creative director of the Metaverse for High Street, which you might have seen Jenny up here about an hour or two ago talking about. I also am running a uh, DAO called the Metaverse Property Alliance, which is buying land and all the different metaverses. Uh, but I'm originally from... Probably smart. <laughs> yeah, and I'm really excited about that, and I think that's going to do really well. But before that, I came from the indie game world. Uh, the last game I put out was the newest Toe Jam and Earl game with uh, Macaulay Culkin. And I just have really interesting experiences the last six, seven years putting out games in Japan and America. Um, and I'm, my hope is that we can make NFT games be real games in the eyes of gamers. And that's my goal is to make High Street and the things I work with be in, you know, fun on a minute-to-minute, on -minute, second-by-second uh, gameplay level. And that's what I'm really uh, passionate about. Sounds good. All right, my turn. Uh, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chase. I am the co-founder and CEO of a company called OP Games. Uh, we've been in the game space, I'd say, for the last five years now, specifically in crypto. Uh, founded the company back in 2017. Um, you know, went through terrible bear markets. Uh, went on several accelerators just to survive. And uh, this year, we've um, fundraised 8.6 million dollars for a, a blockchain and gaming platform called OP Games, as I've mentioned. Um, this is an indie-friendly game platform, essentially bringing in HTML5 games um, who essentially nobody really cares about in the gaming space, um, specifically because mobile immunity is kind of like, you know, the king of all of these things in terms of monetization. So we're planning on bringing all of these games from Web 2 to Web 3. We're building toolings underneath that so that they can easily use that, like in terms of like competitive competitions, um, PvP, better NFT, and whoever wins they, takes that NFT. All of this monetization structure that allows game developers from Web 2 to succeed into Web 3. Um, prior to this, I was actually a CMO for a gaming company back in China. I was a game publisher slash investor, so I typically work with um, mobile game developers, both indie and studios, to publish their games. And that's kind of like where I know this is parity in terms of the inequity between um, game studios, game developers versus um, the publishers. And I think that um, NFT in general, when we all started this whole space, you know, like three years ago, NFT at NYC, I believe it was like 300 people. 
Um, and then now look at, looking at, you know, you know, the number of attendees, like it's, you know, been a massive, massive jump. So I got overwhelmed um, when I got here um, because three years ago and then two years ago, the second NFT at NYC, it wasn't this huge. So I guess thanks to everybody for sort of like really catching up and like recognizing that NFT is going to happen gaming hell yeah <laughs> yeah i heard uh kind of a seminal moment um and now actually we're gonna have a really fun disc discussion i think um but if you went to alexi ohani and speak uh i think it was yesterday uh gentleman popped up on stage he said hey i didn't make it to woodstock in 69 but he's like everything when there was like peace love happiness and it kind of felt like twitter was all just all political i hate you f this COVID that whatever and then it turned into hey gm gm good night hope everyone has a blessed day we're all gonna make it and that's kind of like what we're experiencing now. And, the, and he kind of said like this event might be like the pinnacle of 2021, kind of like kicking everything into high gear into NFTs. But for the discussion today on gaming, I think it's gonna be great because we have two devs, we have two YouTubers, um, between Kagi and myself who, you know, Kagi's a lot more on the playing and kind of getting early alpha and testing out. For me, I do a lot of deep dives into white papers, tokenomics and kind of, you know, exploring all from that side. So talking about trends in gaming, one of the first things I want to hit because it seems like every game has it, and I really want to know how many games actually will be able to flourish with it in the future is land. I know you talked about it. There is land freaking everywhere. Like everyone has land. And I think it's, it's great because if you could own a portion of the Fortnite map or if you could own a portion of the Call of Duty Warzone map, that's a really freaking cool thing to do. And if it was by, you know, action taken there or loot found and you got paid out by usability on it. There's a lot of potential there on a really popular game, but you know, if there's thousands of projects right now that are thinking about launching land at some point, how much land do we actually think is going to survive? Um, I mean, I think that land is a lot like just any NFT in that the utility of it is really what's important, you know, um, because right now you're seeing a giant land rush or all these different games are trying to sell land. Um, and really it's going to be important is, and, and we're going to, we're just going to see that these Web3 Zillow type things that we're going to start, like we meta that will start collecting all this information and showing you, oh, this land has this many monthly active users, or these are the type of transactions that happen there. And I think that will help people make those decisions. But, you know, for me, I think that there's two different things you want to look at. You want to look at, is the land a yield generating land, like an Axie land or Ember Sword, where you can actually earn money from just people doing transactions there, so we can look at it as like, oh, this is a passive income, you know, thing? Or is it something like Decentraland or Sandbox where there isn't necessarily a passive thing there, but you could rent out the space, you could use it to advertise things, and foot traffic is going to be really important. And I think that those are kind of different verticals, but uh, those are really the two things I look for. I think if, if a land is just like a random thing and there is no way to make money off of it and there's no data about like people coming through, I, I still think it's probably going to appreciate if you get in now. But I think long term, those things might not not make it. Is that financial advice? No, no financial yeah, advice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chase, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm. I'm all on board on lands in general. Like when when um, so I met Sebastian of um, the Sandbox back in 2018 GDC when they were still pivoting over from Web 2 to Web 3, and that's kind of like where I found out about like okay, our plans on 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 delivering lands and so like turning that into NFTs and turning that into experiences. Um, the central end game and then now almost everybody's sort of like issuing a certain vehicle of sort that's essentially if you look at it land in general you can cultivate that you can create an experience around that as you know mentioned you know it could be something that's yield generating but i think at some point it will consolidate to a certain level of um sort of like where does it really matter to be in because as you mentioned, like food traffic is not always going to be there. Um, you're creating communities after communities after communities. Land is just basically a vehicle to experience something. But more than that, um, is there any value that you could derive from the experience that you actually go through, um, through all of these worlds um, or lands in general? So I think that, you know, the, the gold rush for lands I think it's about to end at some point because now everybody who's issued lands are sort of like hell bent on delivering value to that piece of land that at this point somehow are still pieces of empty nothingness in general. And I think that's going to be the goal for every land owner or for every land developer in general. Um, so we'll see more of these lands, but I think we'll see more cultivation of experiences moving forward, whether that's run by a specific company, 
whether that's run by you know a DAO owning these different types of lands. Um, like even in OP games, for example, I noticed that it's not essentially a land, but there are games within our platform. Think about it like itch.io, but with like, you know Web3 in it. Um, so there are multiple casual, hyper casual games in the platform, and some of these games are not necessarily owned by one developer, but rather owned by a DAO or a group of people that's turning these games into an enterprise. So, you know, um, you'd see more of this happening, not just on a land perspective, but any collective pursuit where you can go ahead and contribute to a specific DAO or a group of people as a whole. So, Kagi, where's the juice? Where's the land that we want to be buying? What are you buying? What am what I buying? buying? Uh, well, yeah, definitely Axie Infinity. You know, we got early into land. Everyone's Infinity. everyone's gonna buy Axie Infinity. Land. Do you Where's have Do you have land in Axie? Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Yeah, Axie definitely Sandbox. Um, I played the the Alpha in the Sandbox. The game is looking absolutely insane out the wazoo. Um, I think it's a great experience. And now that we're seeing like you know uh, PFP projects like maybe Board Apes, maybe Sub Thugs. I don't know that one, what, what that That's one is. That's the Arcadians. Yeah, yeah. You'll um, know about it one of these days. Yeah, so a lot of these projects are connecting to the sandbox. So um, if you're part of those communities and you enjoy those communities for what they are, now you're going to be able to kind of walk around, I guess, with your subtuck or um, your board apes or your cyberkongs. By the way, shout out to cyberkongs. I don't have my badge, but <laughs> shout out to Coco, um, big investor in Axie and cyberkongs. Let's go. Um, you also got Ember Sword. Ember Sword is an interesting one because Ember Sword, like you said, um, it's, a, it's, it's like a hybrid game where um, you don't necessarily feel like it's an NFT game. And I think we need those type of games like Ember Sword, like Blancos. Uh, Blancos doesn't have land, but Ember Sword does. Um, where you can, if you understand NFTs, then you can buy the land. But if you're just a gamer that likes MMOs, MMORPGs, you just go play. And if you learn about NFTs, then you now have to learn how to do uh, a MetaMask or a wallet or whatever, right? So uh, those are hybrid games. They're not fully, fully tokenized. Um, Sandbox and Axie are fully, fully tokenized, like everything, absolutely everything. The weapon, the character, the token, everything. The uh, Ember Store is not like that. It's only cosmetics and land. And you earn through the land by the sales that happen on the cosmetics. So you get a percentage of everything that happens in the marketplace. Um, so yeah. The, right, so, a, and I know. This is a mix. I know you troll a little bit on Twitter, just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and so I know you joke a lot about no more card games. And that's one of the trends that you see right now. I think A, because it's just an easy thing to do, right? Like if you only have to, you know, make 60 cards that are not broken and work well with each other, like card games are not easy to master, but they're easy enough that you can't really mess it up too bad. Um, so that's a trend that obviously you've identified um, frequently into NFT and, pl and uh, play to earn games or games in the space. Um, I know you're looking for more. What are you looking for? And then I want to hear from you guys on the dev side, like, what do you actually think is going to be the next thing? But I'm going to let you start. Like, what do you yeah. want next? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Let, let me tap into the, to the card thing. Um, for example, Axie Infinity, I'll go back to Axie because Axie is the pillar um, of the NFT gaming community that you, you can't deny that. Whether you like it or you hate it, it doesn't matter. The point is, it's number, number one game, and you got to respect it for what it is, number one game. So um, Axie Infinity, uh, it's a card game, but it, they always had the vision to have the land, right? They always had the vision to expand upon that um, card game. I never joined Axie for the card game. I joined for the land gameplay, right? When they showed me that vision, I was like, oh, now I understand. I don't mind playing a little bit of card games or whatever, um, but there's just not enough content in card game as a content creator. I mean, you are the whole content. Um, when a game doesn't give you that content, then you have to create that content. And I stream sometimes for 12 hours a day, right? Um, so what, a card game just there? I mean, a lot of millions of people play chess. That doesn't mean it's good content, right? So that's kind of how I see card games. Nothing against card games. It's just how, the, that's how I see it from a content perspective. And I would like to see what we're seeing. We're actually seeing a lot of MMOs, uh, places that we can hang out. You know, Ember Source Sandbox, Illuvium as well. It's going to have an open world. Um, there's another game that is kind of not a card game, but it's a team type, team fight tactics type of game. Uh, which I'm not a big fan of, but it does have the open world where you go get your pets and then you fight them against other players. So now you have a world where you can explore and, you know, and be creative in. 
and hang out with other people. So yeah, MMORPGs are the natural thing for play to earn, absolutely for me. Uh, I mean, people have been playing to earn in MMORPGs for years, 20 plus years, you know? Uh, you know, I'm not that old, but I did read up on, you know, games like EverQuest, 1999, right? People had like, uh, uh, they were playing to earn there uh, illegally, obviously, against TOS, but people have been doing this for years in WoW, they have been doing it in RuneScape, those are the natural games. All you have to do now is just make it legal, uh, allow people to do it, and now people can verify those those resources that they're farming. And that's pretty much what it is. Play to earn is not that um, it's not it's not that new. You know, it's been here for a while. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> so I was trying to find out where where. So we we talked about trends in game and like there's a lot of card stuff out there right now. What he wanted next, so he wanted the MMOs. I actually agree with that, but. I wanted to see where you guys actually think it's going to go next. Like, I think MMOs, to actually do it right, is going to be a couple, three, four years out. So, like, what is actually the next evolution beyond just kind of, like, the card game or the simpler games I we're mean, seeing I, right I now? I think we're going to see a lot of projects fail. I think that we're going to see, this is like the beginning of Kickstarter, where people can make these grandiose things. We're going to do this, we're going to do that. And they, have, they have no idea how they're going to execute, and people are so, like, blinded by the lights and how and they they want to get in and all these things. So, you look at Alluvium or or um, Star Atlas, Star Atlas, or Parallel, and it's just concept art. There's no what is the gameplay? What is what is? I want to know how are you making this game? Who's working on the game? What is what is the game plan? How does the game mechanics work? What engine are you using to build it? Eh, it's fud. Okay, well, I mean, and, and you know, but the thing is that those is. things just keep going up in value. So it's like it's hard to be like, oh, I'm I'm right, or you know. But I think eventually these things will fall apart when people realize, oh, they're raising on a on hype and not on execution on people who've actually done that and successfully. So I hope that, you know, the, the wheat gets separated from the chaff and I look at like the teams and, and what they're actually building and if they know how to build it. So that would happen what, naturally, I think, right? Yeah, so what do you, what do you think is actually going to happen next? Like, do you think it's just going to be a couple of years till we have that MMO game from your opinion? Or like, what, is there going to be something else in between there where it, you know, it ends up being like a side scroller where you're kind of still moving, jumping, doing things, but it's not, you know, the full open world 3D? No, I mean, there's a lot of people who are in the space, you know, between like Big Time and, and, and Alluvium and all these different places. And I'm sure that some of them are like, you know, like it's, it's I've built multiplayer games on, on a big scale um, that don't even involve play to earn and all these other extra elements. It's very difficult and it's very time consuming, even with tens of millions of dollars. So I can't imagine that people who are trying to rush it out as quickly as possible to like, get information out to keep the price up it's going to be i think it's going to be lower than expectations i think people are going to come in with cyberpunk 27 ex expectations and they're going to get the product of cyberpunk 2077 that yes. that meme of a horse where <laughs> you see that like really cool looking horse yeah. expectation versus reality um i think that would really apply to like how it is here quite honestly being in the game space i'd say i'm not that old but no, I have um, been in a game space for the last um, 13 years now. Um, you know, I've, I've been seeing the trends in terms of like how the movement would look like into the gaming slash NFT space. I think what we need more right now is, you know, at least on the game developer side of things outside of crypto and blockchain is a huge paradigm shift in terms of like how they design the game aesthetically, but not only that, most importantly, like economically, because, you know, speaking to indie devs and even game studios for that matter, we've been all accustomed to the free to play um, sort of like mentality of immediate gratification of throwing in items here and there, doing live ops, um, and then suddenly you get to sell this much number of, um, assets, whether that's a sword or whatever, right? Um, in crypto, it changes because you're building communities, you're building the value of the asset first before you go on a pre-sale, for example, for a PFP project, which say, for example, has the gaming utility. Um, and so I'm seeing a lot of like movement from Web2 games into Web3 games, and they go like, oh, let's put play to earn in this, and let's put a token. And, you know, what they don't see is that, like, with Axie Infinity, they started off back in 2017. Um, it was a very, very early project with not a lot of traction at that time, right? Um, I remember I, I spoke to Jeff back in, um, I think, in San Francisco, 2017. And, you know, they were, like, in their early prototype of Axie Infinity. 
and then look at where they are now. And that's not an accident. That's not a coincidence. It's basically a product of not just the gameplay, but also a very thoughtful um, process of like how to create their economics. And that's kind of like where a lot of like Web 2 games that are sort of like moving right away into Web 3 would find difficult is that they do may have fantastic skins or all of these wonderful like assets and stuff that you can actually watch visually. But, you know, the the tokenomics behind that may be weak if, if that makes sense. And that's something that they have to, to really think about. And Web 3 in general, the, the gaming paradigm is completely, completely different that I think that everybody in the space should also think of new ways of delivering things on a gaming perspective and not necessarily bringing in all the same paradigm of gameplay from Web 2 to Web 3 because it's just a completely new world altogether. Like in Web 2, there is no level of composability. Like maybe there is, like, but it's a closed ecosystem. But here you have... You know, Loot Project, for example, um, you know, kind of like a composable D&D with all of these things that you could plug into other projects eventually. I think that's kind of like where we should really recognize the power of Web3 because um, if we just sort of like, all right, aesthetics of Web2, bring to Web3, add some tokens, that's it. We're basically doing a disservice to the capacity of what blockchain and gaming and the crypto ecosystem can do to games. So I think that composability is something that most developers should really think about moving forward. Um, you know, the power of network effects and how they could leverage on multiple communities that are already in existence but doesn't necessarily have, say, a game that is playable just yet. Um, I guess, like, just to sort of like steal um, um, this sort of like phrase coming from one of my um, advisors. Um, his name is Miko Matsumura. Um, he was here in the panel a while ago this morning and um, we had a talk yesterday and he was like, you know what? I feel that gaming right now should have this sense of consensual reality. And what he meant by that was um, in a way when we were kids, when we're playing, like we usually play make-believe, right? Like say, for example, I... I say, I'm, I'm Cyclops, and then you're Wolverine, and I you know, shoot you with my laser beam or whatever that is. Actually, forgive me, X-Men um, purist. It's not a laser beam. I just don't know what it is. But, um, <laughs> but I shoot um, Wolverine, and Wolverine dies. I can forgive you because Wolverine will not die. But um, you know, as, as the p person playing along with that person, I would go ahead and say, okay, I de I'm dead. Right? I accept that reality. We all agree on that. And if we put that into perspective of like how these NFT projects work, I think like the community could go ahead and sort of like set their own gameplay, agreed on, agree on one specific or more than many specific amounts of um, realities in terms of like how the game should be played. Um, I think that's going to be a very powerful thing um, where we basically create the rule sets um, as opposed to having a very rigid standard rule set that applies to everything. Because, you know, if you want interoperability, game balance is a bitch, right? But... Oh, that's brilliant. I, I really like that. I, I hadn't thought about that personally, but I think that's a genius way. Because I remember, you know, um, growing up, like, you just make up games on other things and or layer, like, checkers and chess because you didn't know what the hell you were doing when you were six years old. And you make up your rules, your siblings, and kind of play your own game, but you still enjoy it. You have all the pieces, but you're playing and, and developing your own thing. Uh, we don't have a ton of time left, but I do want to kind of get um, your future state. And I'll ask you first because you're, you're, you play a lot of the games and test a lot. Um, but I want to know, honestly, uh, twofold, how far away are we, do you think, from like a, a Ready Player One free guy um, environment? And then two, how many do you think will actually exist? Like, are we going to do a Ready Player One where there's one massive kind of decentralized or maybe not decentralized, but one company Maybe not, hopefully not Facebook, but there's one company that's kind of running everything and everyone's playing and addicted in that one game, but you're so invested into that, you're kind of stuck there. Um, or is there going to be five, ten? So we don't have a ton of time, so I'll let you go first. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to, I'm, I'm going to try to go quick on this. I think it's going to be very, very hard for everything to be connected because um, there's uh, the, the, what's it called in English? Oh, I'm so sorry about this. Um, people have interests, right? Um, if, you, if you create a game and it blows up, uh, without naming any games, just like any platform, 
Um, do you really, really want to put in work for somebody else that, you know, has an idea that is coming up, you know, and connected and to, to your game and everything be interconnected, you know? Um, I think it's going to be a few platforms that offer that. Like, you got running network, right? Um, there's going to be many, many games. And within those games, within the running network, you're going to be able to be in that world. And then you got, for example, Gala Games, um, and then you got Engine, and then you got Phantasma blockchain, and then you got, um, so there's going to be separate ecosystems where you're going to be able to go from game to game, um, but only in this ecosystem. And some of them will open up, like maybe Gala Games collaborates with, I don't know, Running Network, or Running Network collaborates, but I don't think it's going to be that easy because there's a lot of work to it. If I get a skin in Decentraland, and I want to put it into Axie, or in a skin from Axie and put it into Decentraland, that has to be built. And who's going to build it? Right. So real quick, so how how long until you get Ready Player One type of thing? I don't know. Real quick, uh, to, to be see. honest, I, yes. I I I to ten ten fifteen years. Ten fifteen mm -hmm. years. How about you guys, real quick, before we run out of time? Uh, I think that the power is going to be in the avatars because you know you can take as long as it's interoperable, whether it be um, Ready Player Me or whatever. That's where I think the power is because then it's going to be like what worlds can can respect your avatar, the things that you have. I think those are the ones that are going to succeed. I think in the next five to ten years, we'll probably have like a hundred metaverses that are like doing really well. But I think in like 20, 30 years, I think we could probably be down to one or two. I like that number better, actually. Well, it's safer. 30, 40, 50, 60. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 you know, I mean, I'm, I think, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to play it safe. I think it's about eight months, six, uh, eight years, six months, and seven days. How many seconds? Uh, that I haven't thought of, but oh. maybe like about 24. 24 seconds? Yeah. All right, great. If we still have 50 seconds. How many, how, many, uh, how many will actually exist, though, do you think? It's only going to be one are going to come out in the end, or is it going to be... 10, 15, 100? Mm, throw around the number. I'd say 20. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Remember, hey, if anybody, nope. wait, wait. If anybody works at Steam, you made the wrong move, maybe. <laughs> you made the wrong move. Well, I'm telling you right Steam, now. you're fucking up. And don't forget, as Kagi says, no NFT. No play, baby. No play, baby. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank guys. you everybody. Wow. Thank you, guys, very much. We appreciate you being here.